Cause Don Shivakorda, welcome for fall to roll. Good to uh, Q and A. Namisa, so you're very welcome to this one's Q and A uh, on uh, bite size Irish. Um, generally, for these Q and As, we have a particular theme related to aspects of Irish um, or Irish culture. Tonight, we're going to concentrate on the bite size platform itself. Um, what it's evolved into, the various different um, memberships um, that uh, we offer, um, and just talk to Owen and Emma about different aspects of that. And um, just to give an overview of what the offering is, how it works, why, what it costs, um, because we do a lot of free content, or certainly have done over the years, and while um, that's valuable to people, we haven't really given people an opportunity to have a look and see what um, I suppose is to have a peek behind the paywall, let's say, and um, just so that you can see if uh, any of it makes sense and if it's something that you think that would work for you as an Irish language learner or enthusiast. So this is interesting for me because I haven't been with Bite Size for very long. And while I've been working away on various different things, we generally have a lot to do and we don't get a chance to just sit down and talk about things broadly. So I have a pretty good idea of what we've been doing this year, how the site has developed recently, but I don't know that much about the origins or the development of bite size, generally speaking. So while Owen has interviewed me recently enough to see if he wanted me to come and work for him, I haven't had a chance to ask him very many questions. So the first thing I wanted to ask tonight um, was, how bite size came about i know owen that you grew up in irish-speaking household not in an irish-speaking area and um, but i also know that say irish language teaching or i don't think that you studied irish language at third level or anything like that i think i gather that your background is in software development and that sort of thing so obviously there's a bit of a marriage of the two things there but could you tell me a little bit how about how it started and how it developed into what it is now please okay well okay um to jump back really far um i was about 15 and i had this home page as they called it in the 90s and um, and i wrote about a bit about my life and there was a bit of gaelge written so i think it was asperla and as gaelge and um i started getting contacted by people who were suddenly like exposed to real Irish people uh, online and trying to make a connection back to the homeland. And I ran a Irish Gaelic translator site um, for a few years. And then um, I really wanted to help people learn Gaelge. Um, and the idea of Bites as Irish, originally it was like, 30 bytes, 30 days, and that was it, emails. And it quick. It was very obvious very quickly that um, you need some sound recordings and a bit more interactivity. So it really became online lessons. And that was for a few years. And then like the last several years, Bites as Irish has become something a bit bigger than just online courses, self-paced courses that we have a whole community of learners that Emma here is the Banished or Bubble, the community manager. And it's about Gaelga Gachla, our motto, Irish every day, and how to help you learn and practice the Irish language every single day. So I guess the energy we all get in Bite Size Ben is hearing from people who are um, learning Irish or intend to and the interaction we have with our members there's several hundred so there's quite a few people learning with bite size now so that, that was a, a fair quick tour i think of where bite size irish comes from very good thank you and apologies i lost my my audio at the beginning there your answer to go up and get some headphones or clues on um so thank you so it isn't a classroom and it isn't a grammar book and it isn't a video tutorial platform um, it's a combination of that and more. So could you give us a brief overview of how it works? Um, maybe give us a look at um, how the lessons are, are structured. Okay. Um, okay. 
So yeah, there's the core part I'd say is the the online self-paced Irish language lessons um that we've been working on and refining for like past decade, but in March 2022 we launched again with this whole new platform called Aster, which means journey and it really spoke to all of us on the team. I think I'll do a screen share there and this is uh, my view of the Ashter platform. So for Bytes as Irish members, when they become a member, they get immediate access to Ashter. And that's our platform that ho houses all the learning content and links you off if you're a Grow member to Bytes as Pubble and Bytes as Bio Scripts. And we could talk about that later. Um, essentially, Ashter is self paced. So you get to choose where you are on your journey, how fast you want to go or how slow, how methodical or not. Um, and what I see here is uh, two Sma and Shulik Shkeluk. There are two biggest, I'd say, um, parts of the journey. They're guided tour of learning the Irish language. And I'll jump into two Sma. Two small and Hebra, a good start is, ha is half the work. So it's a great proverb. Um, and you can see as soon as we get in, you can listen to recording and we've got phonetic spelling, which does help people kind of distinguish words that they don't understand the sounds that they're hearing um, is how it's described to me. So it's even hard to pick out sounds if you're not familiar with them. Um, so the idea here is that you play the sound and repeat aloud if possible. Um, and too smart is a good place to just give a bit more information, Ben, because um, no matter what plan you are on Bytes Irish um, membership plan, you get access to too smart. So um, one of our values is that we're modern and Irish. And so we've taken uh, Neil, who designed this course, um, everyday topics, um, mm -hmm. but inside them, there's modern everyday language as well, Irish language, rather than being stuck in like textbook Irish, uh, trying to be as authentic as it's possible. That's not authentic. It's, it's more authentic to learn the Irish language words that are in current usage now, today. I'm sure we can see that change from year to year even. So the course is split over 10 modules and I'm just going to, before going back to you, Ben, I'll mm -hmm. go into the first module, meeting mm -hmm. and greeting. I've completed it already so I can download a certificate. Mm -hmm. um, but it, we have um, a guided checklist essentially of each step to take um, to complete this module. And some people might take one lesson a day, one lesson a week, several lessons a day. It doesn't really matter. It really depends on the person learning. Um, so this is a lesson that we're saying, saying hello. So great emphasis on conversational skills. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we've learned over the years, what people are really invigorated by. They want to express and connect with others. Ask Ailga. Um, so we get you straight in um, to these recordings and we go a little bit more into the meaning of things than simply trying to teach you phrases. Uh, we do try to give like the literal idea or the cultural background, which I think is very important. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of a lot of these lessons, there's an interactive quiz. And I think something to call out as well, you can write in a question to our the staff of Bites as Irish and we answer questions. So if you're learning alone um, at your own pace, it, be, it can be a bit lonely because if you get stuck, you don't really know what to do or how to get feedback. So feedback is a part of this whole course. So I'm going to jump back to two smart Ben mm -hmm. and I don't know, do you have any questions on it or we can stop the screen share? It's up to you. Well, um, well, it's interesting. There were two things that you raised there um, in terms of feedback and in terms of conversation. Um, 
moving on maybe to some of the live elements of um, Bite Size. I host, um, along with Siobhan, Bite Size Bio on a Tuesday. And what I have noticed is, yes, the conversation really is the top priority for people um, who attend those. I mean, obviously, um, it's a conversation class, so you, you would expect that they would be interested in that. But more than anything else, they really, really enjoy the opportunity to practice what they've learned um, with other learners, but also to get quite exact and to some degrees pedantic advice on pronunciation and how to be consistent with use of terms that relate and grammar that relate to particular dialects. So it's nice. Um, my own background is Cuygamoon, Munster, um, but I've lived in Connemara and I worked up there for a period of years um, in Radio Nagelthachte. And I also studied Irish at university in Galway. So I have a pretty good exposure to people from all of the different Gaeltacht. So even though I might not speak, for instance, Ulster Irish myself, I can make a pretty good fist of helping them to be consistent in what they do. And yes, we do have grammar notes and we do talk about things that are related and sometimes quite tangential to what's in the script of conversation. So it's a structured practice, but it also is quite rich in other ways. And sometimes I'll apologize to people for having digressed and they'll say, no, thank you. I'm glad that you did, you know, so it can go off like that. Um, the other thing that you were talking about was feedback. So um, I have at times worked for other Irish language um, educational institutions. And let's say as a classroom teacher or an online teacher, yes, I will stay behind for five minutes after the class and ask answer people's questions if they didn't have time to ask something during the course of the class. But I won't be there like between nine and five every day of the week answering every little question that they have um, because it's simply not part of the role. But with bite size, um, although it doesn't arise much in terms of online questions in my own role, it does, you know, you have two or two, three things the next day after the script conversation practice. But certainly with Emma, that's one of her roles is to be there and you'll get an answer. I, I'd imagine some sometime in the same day on whatever given question and query you might have. And she's also prompting people by setting them daily tasks, quizzes, raising points of interest, asking people to reflect on different things. So I think that's a very valuable thing because regardless of your schedule or how much or how little you apply yourself to it, when you choose to, there's somebody there who will respond and will um, give you their opinion and certainly will give you a bit of encouragement as well. So um, that's an interesting aspect of now we have three different plans here. This changed recently. So it, that's an aspect of grow. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we have an option here. Owen, you could tell us about the different subscriptions and how you've broken them down and what the elements are, if you like. Or Emma, you could um, tell me what value um, the live elements that you're working on have for members as far as you're concerned. Well, Owen, maybe if you just explain the difference between the three so we can get some context and then I can follow on with with the GROW membership, perhaps. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. So, yeah, we'll we'll take a step back so um, and look at our membership plans because it does define... It, it really relates back to where you are on your Irish language journey. Like, there was the obvious idea of beginner kind of medium and advanced um learners and first of all people would say more people than really should say said they were beginners so they wouldn't let themselves go further on the journey and a lot of it is enthusiasm like how much energy are you willing to bring your irish language journey um uh, are you willing to practice gaelic gach law um so we have three membership plans and the pricing the big pricing here is in euro um and we do have 
US dollar, British pound, and Australian dollar too. Um, and we'll share um, a discount link um, for 10% off your first month later on. Um, but I suppose, okay, we'll start in the middle. The Explore plan has access to um, all of our um, courses on Ashter. And that includes two SMA that we were looking at. But there's more interesting ones too. Um, there's uh, Bites as Yoga. There's a Sing a Song in Irish course where there's three traditional songs that Siobhan teaches you to sing through vid recorded videos, teaches you the story of the song. And then bit by bit, you learn to sing the song as well. So it's a great way to learn Irish because you can practice it over and over again crack Irish pronunciation course, video course, and the whole toolkit on how to implement Gwelgi Gakla. And uh, we're always developing new content, recording new phrases, uh, releasing new modules. Uh, so explorers get that. Now, uh, if that's too far for your Irish language journey, and it does include Shulik Shkela course also that we might talk about later, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, but back to foundations, it's too smart only, and it's all at your own pace. Um, you get access to the 10 modules. Um, you can finish it as fast as you want. You won't lose access at the end. You're a member as long as you want. There's no contract, um, so it's a monthly payment. So uh, it's very, uh, depending on your context, um, this is the most affordable and quick dip back into Irish. Um, I'd love to mention people are coming back to Irish because we hear from these people more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk to them in my daily life, like parents at the Gael School who want to learn more Irish and they want to help their kids to speak Irish too. So it's this um, good positive feedback loop. So Foundations is a great place to jump in if you're an absolute beginner or you really don't feel like you're an active learner. If you are already an active learner, absolutely jump in to explore because you'll be able to jump across the different self-paced courses and then grow um, what you were talking about and what Emma will tell us more about is really the community aspect and it, it unlocks the Gwail Gagach Law idea. Um, so really quickly get Bite Size Pubble, Private Learners Community. And then uh, bite size bio conversational calls, um, daily challenges, and another call. But um, Emma, I think you're much better suited to tell us why we have grow and what's involved. Yeah. So well, I'm on I'm on our online community uh, bite size bubble every day. Well, Monday to Friday, and I interact with. The members there, the Irish language learners who want to take that extra step from learning alone uh, to learning with others, which is quite, well, it's quite important, I think. It's an important aspect when you want to get to a certain level, I think. Um, so I'm on there every day. And as Ben mentioned earlier, I encourage people to reflect, to learn, to write, to read. So every day I have a different challenge set out so on a monday i will set out a reading piece it's not terribly long but members are encouraged to read it and answer questions or perhaps some weeks i'll get them to uh, analyze the vocabulary it kind of you know i like to mix it up a bit to keep people interested and you know not have it too too boring or too repetitive every week. And I pick a new topic every week. So every Monday I'll have a new topic for that week and all of the challenges from Monday to Friday will be based on that topic. So for example, this week we are looking at space, so outer space. Um, I've been with Bite Size now for a year and a bit, a year and a half. Um, so I, I do have to be creative when I come up with a new topic every single week. So um, outer space is, is this week's one. But I do, I make them more, sometimes I go a bit more simple, we come back to more general topics, but it's very nice to be able to broaden your vocabulary and your knowledge and, you know, um, everything on different topics. So that's what I do. And when our members answer and 
get I get back to them then afterwards. So, for example, with the reading or the writing on a Tuesday, they would write a piece and I will, you know, give my feedback. I won't correct everything word for word. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. Um. But I definitely give constructive feedback on what they did. If they if there's some specific grammar, I will link them to that grammar um, point maybe on an online dictionary or I explain things. Um, and I often get questions about, well, what was this word and why is it in this context? And, uh, you know, I, I always get that, that. And I'm there. I'm there to basically answer the questions. And as we said, you know, I'll get back to you within a day or two, um, depending on how busy Pubble is because sometimes it gets quite busy because not only am I posting every day, uh, we also have an area for our members to post questions and have chats and discuss things. So um, I really love to see that as well. Um, we have people just sharing about what happened in their their week. Um, if they went on holidays, they might share photographs of that. Um, so it's really, really there's a lot going on. And I love to log on in the in the morning and see, you know, lots of new topics and uh, what's going on what people are saying sharing other resources that they've that they found on their own journey of learning on their own and um, so my point is then with the daily challenges I don't make them too long because I'm very aware that people are also learning on our Astra platform well I hope they are um, or perhaps they're doing another online class somewhere or perhaps they're going through their own books so I, I make them very doable that it is a Gael Gagach law challenge that you can do it within the day I don't set an essay for Monday and expect you to have it done by the following Monday no mm -hmm. it's very much small bites um, but it encourages you to be able to do it within, you know, depending on your level, a couple of minutes, half an hour a day. And that's your that's your daily chunk of Gaelge, even if you don't even look at a book after that. And the other thing that I do, which Ben mentioned earlier when he mentioned his side of the live classes or the live calls on uh, Bite Size Pubble. So uh, Ben, you host and Siobhan host uh, Bite Size Beyond a Tuesday. And my role where I actually link up with the members in person, well, online in person, but mm -hmm. via video call would be my monthly uh, chat, my Gleach Cougar Mugger. And when I started with Bite Size, I actually asked the members at the time what they really wanted from this call. Um, because, you know, I wasn't sure I was new. There wasn't really a set a set. Thing with this call I knew I had to do it monthly but I wanted to find out from the horse's mouth that they say so the members told me that they really wanted reading practice and I think that's a very good idea because often when you're reading through books at home you'll read the words but you've no idea if you're actually saying them correctly we always say to read out loud but yeah you could be reading out loud for a year on your own but you could mm -hmm. be reading the same word and no one has ever heard you to correct you <laughs> so that's that's why I thought this was a great thing to do because you need that you know you need that help and then the next time you come across that word you'll know so what I do is I pick a very random um piece of reading which is different to the way that Bite Size Bio would work, which is a scripted call that everybody knows what's coming up every week. I like the element of surprise and everybody's on the same level. No matter if you're a beginner or you're advanced, everyone gets a chance to read. And you might not be the best at reading. You might, you know, not feel confident in everything, but I'm there to help and to support you. And every, I really love the, the, the call because everyone's just so involved and everyone gets a piece to read and then at the end we if we have time we usually answer some questions on the text or we get I get questions on vocabulary on grammar I'll fly through things like that as well as we go so yeah that's my role really on Bite Size Pubble it sounds like a lot but um, I really enjoy it Monday to Friday I really made a connection with everybody there um, and I, va I value it even though you know I'm not a learner, well I am, but you know, we're always a learner, but um I even value it there as and it's my job, so to say. I really enjoy it. I really, really mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. Very good. And it's interesting what you say about that bit of help um that you get with knowing what it is you're reading out, what knowing how it ought to sound. Mm -hmm. Um I'm living in Portugal at the moment and slowly learning Portuguese. Um and oftentimes I'll know I'm going somewhere, I'm going to the shop or I'm going into the bank or something like this and I'm going to need to say X, something or other. Mm -hmm. And I'll look it up, but I won't know how it's meant to sound. And sometimes if there is ever a, a language that doesn't sound like it looks like written down, but there's 
there's Gael, yeah, that's one, but another one is Portuguese, and sometimes you just draw a complete blank, you know, when you go in, because they skip syllables, you know, they, they scrunch yeah. everything up, you know, so, yeah, it really is a value when you have somebody telling, you know, that's meant to sound like this, actually, yeah, it's very <laughs> useful. So, yeah, sometimes I see, when I go in to get um, my notes for the things that I do, I see some of your notes from Cobra Mugger, and it, it it looks again like you get into sort of tangents and various different sort of elements of culture and heritage that are associated with whatever it is um, that mm -hmm. you pick. So, so people are, they're little valuable little nuggets of information in all of these things. And as you say about the daily tasks that you set, they are short and they can be completed in a relatively short space of time. But when you put all of those things together, that's also a lot of learning, mm -hmm. um, which kind of, again, brings us back to the idea of the three different plans that Owen was talking about, because Thusma essentially is the core of each of them. Um, but there are other elements um, that give the other um, membership plans value and that community and interactive one is certainly a very enriching and, and rewarding one and um, there are other things too that we haven't spoken about and um, we might just get on to Shulach Shkielach which is a new um, collection of lessons that Neil is working on um, and launching on a monthly basis that we're all quite proud of but even just there's a reference pack that he was working on this year too um, where it summarizes um, things that you will encounter in the course of the live things that we're doing, the dialects, for instance, or in the course of lessons, say, initial mutations, the shavu, the h after the initial consonant, or the ura, which is a prefix on consonants. And it's just a place where you can go and you can find it all neatly and logically explained, um, as logical as grammar can be. Um, in Irish particularly, mm -hmm. uh, by Neil with sound clips. In, for instance, the dialects, you have um, sound clips and examples of uh, how things sound and what the preferences are for different terms in um, different um, Gaeltachti, um, different regions. So, um, oh, and am I right in thinking that that reference pack is part of both Explore and Grow? That's it. This yeah. reference back, yeah. If yeah. if you opt for the basic foundations, like uh, after talking through as a team, it's just a little too much. Um, but if you're, let's call it an active learner, um, yeah. The uh, Asher reference back, yeah. You get as an explore or grow member, um, and this dealing with dialects is really fun because Neil broke new ground really to introduce different speakers to the audio content in Bites as Irish and it's, it's really fun to have different native speakers read out their version of the same uh, piece of text um, yourself included Ben mm -hmm. um, and one of the challenges there is you have to uh, make a guess or an educated guess at um, what um, dialect you're hearing in one of uh, in the audio recordings. That was really fun. It really broke new ground for Bites as Irish and what members get. Mm -hmm. It was a bit like a team meeting because we deal with dialects every time we meet up because we have them all. <laughs> we have them all there. We even have we, we even have on Ryan, which is nice. We do. We do. Um, so. Now, Neil is working on Shulach Shkielach and that he's releasing new modules every month. The reference pack is different. It's It happens when it happens and um, when different things, um, when we notice that um, there's a demand or a need for a certain topic to be covered, it may go in there. So without making any promises, um, what type of things do you think might pop up in there in the future, Owen or Emma? Well, for me, I know we were talking um, about having a better reference of certain verbs, say the short list of irregular verbs, and uh, kind of having an index, not only to bite-sized stuff, like we live in an ecosystem and we definitely 
want to help learners uh, make the most of their journey and bite-size is part of that. Um, we should never say that we're a full answer, but far from it. Um, so <clears throat> there's fantastic references online, but it's a matter of knowing those things. And it's, uh, Ben, Emma, uh, you have this practical knowledge that a learner who's just coming to Irish just doesn't have. They don't know where to go look. They don't know what they're supposed to be looking for. Um, so I can see Ashter reference back having um, helping you as a learner, giving you the skills like how to look up a dictionary online and mm -hmm. how to make the most of that. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, the Internet is full of information, but it's not necessarily all good information, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, it can it can take a lot of time um, trying to find what you're looking for, especially when it comes to elements of grammar. Um, so, um, this is the new thing, um, and I suppose the first thing to talk about is who is it designed for, and um, where's what, what was the idea, and which you were scared. Can we throw that to Emma. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, we. Well, when we set, well, when Neil set out and we were talking about the next steps, we had our meeting together and we thought, well, we have two small. That was good. That was a good launch. Everyone's happy. But where do you go after two small? Uh, we didn't really have anything to follow on after that. Um, so we wanted to create something that learners that either would be at a higher level of two, you know, two small might have they might have gone through quite quickly. Um, or only needed some of the modules within that, they needed somewhere uh, on bite size that they could keep learning. So uh, we came up with the idea of Shuluk Shkeluk, uh, being Shuluk Shkeluk, which is, you know, the traveller has stories to tell. It's not very, it doesn't sound as nice in, in English. But um, what this is, hopefully we will be launching a new module every month. And it is very much designed for people that have the knowledge of Kusma in their heads um, and they feel confident enough to kind of take the next level. So uh, it's it's quite different to the layout of Kusma. So if you are already a member of Bite Size and you've maybe gone through Kusma or, you know, done some of it, uh, you will see differences between and that it's very it's much more interactive as you can see there on the screen there's many more quizzes and um, there's broader more vocab uh, vocabulary that you might not have come across and you you might not come across every single day um when reading whatever textbook you know so what it's kind of focusing on in the first module there you can see the story of Oshin. so it's all about storytelling and uh reporting things talking about things so uh you have an interview there in agal of leshen shanachi and you know you can see that we have longer texts meaning longer um audio recordings and not as much english until you get to the end of it so you are encouraged to work through it um, no one's telling you that you have to understand every single word. We always encourage people to use dictionaries, but it's very easy when you are learning any language, not only Irish. If you're learning any language and you see the English right beside it, your eye almost is drawn mm -hmm. to the English before you even look mm -hmm. at the Irish, you know. So uh, we really encourage we, we want to challenge you to read the Irish and see if you can get um, an idea of it and listen to it before you um reach the English you know you'd be surprised what you would understand before looking yeah. at any other language so that's, um yeah that's it's that's an interesting point that you make about the English and um something that uh bite-sized members have raised with me is why does TG Gahar not have Irish language subtitles why yeah. have English language subtitles it's more of an impediment than an aid um and people are trying to learn um by watching but um that's another thing but Obviously, from what you say, Shulashkil is considerably more advanced um, than Too Small. Definitely, it's, yeah. It's recognizing that people have um, come this far, but it's pushing them a little bit more as well. It's still challenging them. Um, I think there's a, there's a certain amount of being cruel to be kind involved in this. 
you know, it's like the, the English is there, but you have to go and look for it. It's at the end. Um, but I think Neil has really worked on using his, his experience as a teacher um, conceptually in terms of teaching, linking words, in terms of um, challenging people to look at how things are put together. Mm -hmm. and, and to go a little bit further um, in terms of understanding the construction of things, I suppose, rather than um, it, it's not as focused on conversational Irish, I think it's fair to say. Um, and I think it's good. Yeah, it's a good challenge. It recognizes that um, people are, that they're ready to go a little step further after having done and too small so sorry to interrupt you there no um, you're right you're right yeah and the nice thing as well about it is that it's you know you said it's not focused on conversational irish and i said it's not words that you come across but it's very much focused on cult the old cu cultural aspect of ireland and irish which is storytelling and literature mm -hmm. um i'm actually doing my masters at the moment i'm in year two now of my masters in Gaelic literature so I really enjoy this and um, yeah people this, this is what people want as well like we we did get feedback from our customers on what kind of aspects of Irish and how they want to learn and what other things they want to see rather than just grammar and vocabulary you know you want to a look into the culture and the heritage of Ireland and definitely storytelling tales mythological um, aspects, literature, all of that is very much intertwined into the Irish language. You know, you wouldn't, you know, they're, they were originally written in the Irish language. So um, I really think that this is a good, a good, um, a good opportunity for people to learn um, about Ireland through um, the language itself as well. True, and it, it gives a very nice introduction to um, the various different cycles of yeah. um, storytelling and um, down mm -hmm. through the ages in the um, in the introduction and also going back to what we we're talking about in the reference pack you're still going to hear a variety of voices and a variety of dialects in the recordings that um we'll be including um in the modules as the months pass so um there's there are many dimensions to it i think it's fair to say so i look forward to seeing uh, how it unfolds yeah okay so um we welcome your uh, questions and comments in the chat if there's anything that we've described to you in terms of the content of the platform or in terms of how the different plans work and you'd like to um, query any aspects of that to see how it would work for you you're more than welcome to uh, get in touch in the chat there um so I'll just see what we have here. And while you're looking, Ben, mm -hmm. just to throw in a bit more experience from Neil side our learning content developer who is an Ulster man by the way he, <laughs> we have to call him out um he has at university covered Irish mythology um he also has a master's in translation um which gives him really a professional training in accuracy and understanding grammar as much as you could really um but He's also um, an Irish language teacher um, in practice. He teaches adults face-to-face uh, -face and I think a bit online too. So he, he brought a lot of his experience to create Too Sma and Shulik Shailak now. That's true. That's true. Um, now, there's the link you just posted in the chat there for 10% off your first month. Um, Hi, John Delaney Willis in Manchester. Um, so yeah, I uh, was hoping to post that. Um, ah, there we are. So you can't get better than that. 10% off your first month. And of course, there's also a money back guarantee if uh, you don't like um, what you find as well. So 
give it a shot. Um, we did get asked um, when Foundations launched, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, last week. Uh, there were good, valid questions. Um, one in particular was like, how long does it take? Which I mentioned a little earlier, but I think it's worth emphasizing that our online courses, they are self-paced. So we want to encourage you as much as possible to practice Gaelic law Irish every day. Um, but what that looks like in your life it can be very different to somebody else. It depends on what energy and time you have available to you. Um, so all we can say is we do encourage you to practice um, Irish every day. Um, uh, but the content, even for foundations with two SMA, I, I wouldn't be slow to say there's a, at least a few months of learning in there um, if you're really absorbing what the, what's covered in the different lessons. Um, so if people are wondering, yeah, there's a good chunk of learning uh, even in two SMA. Mm -hmm. True. And depending on what um, rate you're working at, you may need to go back and revise what you're doing as well. Certainly I do. <laughs> Um, it'd be nice to show um, the bite size bio scripts as well. So um, I'll navigate to that. Ben, mm -hmm. you might be the best person to talk us through what's sure. involved. Mm -hmm. So the scripts, um, in terms of theme, I think it's fair to say that they relate quite strongly to what's in Too Smart and in the, the different modules. Um, and uh, maybe if you just click on uh, number three there. Um, the way it works is it's an hour long conversation practice and um, people practice in pairs in, in breakout rooms. Um, they do the script once and then they reverse roles. Um, depending on how many people and as much as possible what I like to do is go around the various rooms, have a listen and give people pointers um, without wanting to interrupt the flow. Um, sometimes just note down a few words and wait until they're finished and then say, this needs a bit more, you know, of an emphasis on the afada uh, or you'll notice there's a slenderization at the end there. Um, and then we resume in the main room on Zoom. And what I found works for me, um, oh, well, for the group, um, started doing this maybe halfway through the period that I've been doing it. I've been doing it since um, the end of May, mid-May, is to then practice the conversation with everybody present. I will do it with one person, then I'll review, reverse roles and do the conversation with another learner. So that everybody gets at least, apart from the fact that there's a recording um, at the top, which people use to practice beforehand, they will hear me say every word of the script when we've gone through it twice, and they will get an opportunity to query any sound or any word that they hear during the course of that. Um, so when we've done that then, of times, but not in all cases, there is a vocabulary list of associated vocabulary, not things that you encounter in the conversation script, but things that are closely related. And we'll go through that. Um, and then there are useful grammar notes, which we go through explaining um, why certain things are changing, for instance, um, why um, a noun is changing from the singular nominative to the genitive plural or singular why that's happening, how it happens. Similarly, why some of the initial mutations are happening. We'll talk about um, alternative words that you might use for, for instance, uh, we have homa for also, and lesh for also. We have freshen in Connemara for also. We have fusta up north. So people will encounter um, different terms that are there's a preference for in different dialects, but they also get an opportunity to ask, well, 
what would they say here? I'm interested in this. You know, my grandfather was from Indravon, so I'd like to find out what the Connemara term for this would be. Um, and then, as I've said, the grammar notes and the analysis can lead to interesting um, tangents and diversions. People may ask an associated question, you may get into all sorts of things. And as we're doing this, I keep a little um, note of what we're talking about and a note of the terms um, that we come up with or the explanations that I have for why things are happening, which people can refer to afterwards in order to reinforce the learning, but they can also use it as a way of expanding their vocabulary as well. So that's posted up in Pobble afterwards so that people can refer back to it and so that they're not under any pressure to take notes themselves while they're there as well. Um, and then at the end of it all, there's a list of questions um, which is associated with whatever it is. So your occupation is uh, the example that you have on screen there. So you'll have questions at the bottom, um, such as here we have it here. So Cain post the thought, what job do you have? Um, what's involved or what does your job entail and um, people prepare answers to these questions so each of the learners gets to ask another learner um, one of these questions they will have generally prepared an answer if they've had the time um, and I'll make a note of that as well in the the notes that I'm keeping and sometimes we'll move things around a little bit and we'll you know say well perhaps this should be that and this should be that um, which again is another opportunity to learn based on, on what people have written down at home so that's how it works um, we're getting to the stage now where some of our members um, uh, are they're progressing to the stage that we're having to as we spoke about, consider lengthening some of the scripts um, as well. Um, whether or not in the future that means we have, you know, uh, I wouldn't say beginners, but an ordinary level and a more advanced level in bite size bio, I don't know. But what I'm looking at doing at the moment is certainly with some of the shorter scripts, making them a little bit longer. Um, trying to incorporate as much of what I call kind of the, the language of the people into them to make them, again, you might say modern, but, um, well, contemporary and as realistic as possible, I suppose, in terms of what you will encounter in actually speaking to um, people in a Gaeltacht area. Um, so little things like cougar which means whisper, but it's like cougar, the clue is a, a word in your ear. So just people say, it's like saying, come here, like just cougar, something like this, just to throw these little kind of elements in um, to the script, just to, to bring in things that you're not necessarily going to encounter um, in Irish language lessons. And in, um, I suppose, if you're learning from mainstream media or something like that, you know, news media and that sort of thing, you're not going to hear those little conversational um, nuances and, and um, phrases or little expressions. So that's the idea. And again, that's, that's going to lead to, um, I suppose, richer grammar notes, we're just going to have to be careful and um, that we can cover it all in one hour as well. Um, but it'll be interesting to see um, what we can do in expanding, developing some of the shorter scripts in the, the coming months. It'll be nice work to be doing. So that's the crack, the bite size bio. Um, Jason O'Brien's be good to be learning the normal everyday language. This is the thing. Yeah, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, um, shin shin, and eh? shin shin, a stocha. Yeah, um, we may bring things to a close for the evening. Now, Dindaru, the reached, um, don't forget that we have this. 10% off for your first month if you um, go to this link here. It's at the bottom of the screen. 
Um, hi, Rich in Maine. So yeah, thank you very much. Gurmeel Magu, if I said hello. Then, then play so or bite size for this sort of uh, walk through and just to give people uh, a look at what's on offer and um, various different plans. And uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, next month and to seeing you in the coming days. And we'll go so on. Gurmeel Magu. Gurmeel Magu, Ben. Gurmeel. Slan. Slan.